In this example, we're going to look at matrix multiplication. We're going to work with two matrices, matrix A, which is defined like this, and matrix B, which is defined like this. So A is a two row by three column matrix, and B is a three row by two column matrix. So we're going to compute the product A, B. So matrix A times matrix B. In general, the way that you do this type of computation is what, with what's called the you know, row-column product or the column-row product rule, which says that I can compute the ijth entry of the product AB. So by ij, we mean row i column j. So I can compute one entry in this final matrix by doing the following computation. A sub ik is the row i column k entry of the matrix A. B sub kj is the kth row j column of matrix B. So we're just taking entries from the matrix A and multiplying them by entries from the matrix B. But you'll notice the I index indexes the rows of matrix A, while the J index, index indexes the columns of the matrix B. This definition right here is good for arbitrary matrices. In general, we think of A as an M by N matrix, but we know that the for this to be a well-defined quantity, we need the number of columns in A to match the number of rows in B. Otherwise, we would kind of run out of things to multiply in this definition here if they didn't match in that way. As a specific example for this case, our matrix A is two by three, it has two rows, three columns, and B has three rows and two columns, so these inner dimensions match. The number of columns in A equals the number of rows in B, so as we do this operation, everything will match up. At the output of this operation, so that checks out, at the output, what we're gonna end up with are the outer dimensions. So the result of doing this operation is going to result in a two by two matrix. So we know when we're all said and done, we're going to end up with a two by two matrix. So let's go ahead and use this row column product rule to fill in the two by two matrix. So let's just do this one at a time. The first row, first column, I'm going to denote by one comma one. So let's go ahead and do that computation. So here's my matrix A, here's my matrix B. To compute the row one, column one entry of the final output matrix, I'm going to visualize taking the first row of A and multiplying it element-wise by the first column of B. So that's where the one, one comes from. First row of A, first column of B corresponds to one, one. Now we just multiply these out. Three times one plus zero times five plus five times zero. So those last two terms are obviously zero. This just results in three. So I now know that the entry in row one, column one of the product AB is equal to three. So let's go ahead and fill that in right there, and we'll just fill this out as we go along. So let's go ahead and figure out what the first row, second column entry is. So I write down my matrices A and B. I take the first row of A, and now I multiply it by the second column of B. That's where the one, two comes from. So I multiply this out, 3 times 2, plus 0 times a negative 1, plus 5 times a negative 6. So this is 6 minus 30, which is a negative 24. So I can go ahead and fill that in down here in the first row, second column entry. What about the second row, first column? So we write down our matrices. We're going to take the second row of A, because this is 2, and we're going to multiply by the first column of B, because this is 1. So if we multiply this out, a negative 2 times 1, plus a negative 1 times 5, plus 4 times 0. This is a negative 2 minus 5, which is a negative 7. So I now know this entry of my product. And then what about the final entry, the second row, second column? I write down matrices A and B. I need to take the second row of A times the second column of B. And this is equal to a negative 2 times 2, plus a negative 1 times a negative 1, plus 4 times a negative 6. So that's a negative 4, plus 1, minus 24, which is a negative 27. So I can fill that in right there. So I've used the row column product rule to compute by hand each entry of the matrix product AB. And that's our final answer. This computation is very easy to check just when you're doing simple computations like this. There's plenty of online calculators that will do this for you. But knowing the rule itself is also important because often 
we deal with multiplying out matrices that don't consist of numbers, but they might consist of vectors. We need to multiply things out algebraically and symbolically. So it's good to know how to do this in general, not just for numbers, to be able to multiply this out with symbols and algebraic expressions as well. Knowing how to do this matrix product in that way is also important.